let's profit. talk about that for a minute because that's another interesting topic, and we've talked about this a lot. Now, when you do that and you set that up and you build it, and they will come kind of attitude. Let's talk just a little bit about dough harvesting. As far as, and one thing that another I've always said, it's no different than anything else. You have to approach it by age classes when you can. And you all can't, okay, so hey, we went out and bought our tags. We all got four doe tags. If you're hunting at 40 acres and you got three guys, I hope you're not killing 12 does. Okay, so grand scheme of thing, if you're living in a county that's a high deer density, you want to do your part, but at the same time, you don't want to completely ruin your property. Right. So and, and, give me an insight on how you do that here. Yeah. Well, first off, there's the macro view and the micro view. Exactly. The, the state, the wildlife agency, the department, whoever is setting the harvest totals, the giving out, we need to harvest this many deer, here's that many doe tags, this is this and that. They're not trying to ruin the deer herd. But they cannot, but I'm sorry, they cannot tell you what you need to do on your ground. They're talking this area, not this spot right here. Right. You know, so what I actually do is a pay no attention whatsoever to the macro. You know, I'm looking at the micro, and what I do is I just go out in the spring. Hmm, what are the deer eating for browse? Okay, if I've got 25, per you don't even have to know the species. You, the, you don't have to know what a preferred browse species is versus a non. -per I mean, we try to make this all stuff so darn complicated, and I think frankly it's for our own ego. Keep it simple, stupid. Get out there, the deer are going to tell you what they like to eat because they're going to have eaten a whole bunch you're of You're going to see the browse yeah. lines and you're so, going to see what, what's being... So what I do is I just go out there and take a very loose inventory. I'm not sitting here documenting well, every single... saying that this is a certain type of berry yeah. brush or whatever it All is. I'm doing is looking, do the deer generally like this on this property? Yeah, they're eating it pretty hard. Okay, of the stuff that they have available to them. How much is left? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, if it's 25 to 50%, Beautiful. I'm in my sweet spot. You know what? This ground can handle this number of deer. I'm not destroying, destroying my habitat for future generations. If it's under 20, 25 percent, I need to kill some does. And it is in a lot of places. Yeah, I need to desperately kill some does. Heck, if it's in the 25 to 50, 70 percent, I still, well, especially 50 to 25, I still need to kill some does to keep it in the sweet spot. I just don't need to kill as many. If it's above 50% of the preferred browse species, I'm the only reason I'm going to even think about shooting a doe is to put some meat in the freezer. Right, and there's nothing yeah. wrong with doing that. The other thing too no. is, no, it's you have to uh, you have to temper that based off of how big your property is. And yes. let's face it, the guys with the bigger properties, more of the responsibility is going to be on their shoulders. Definitely. And that's that's how they should view it. And the guys yeah. with the smaller property saying, I can do my part, but at the same time. Like, like, I, like I said, okay, if you want to kill some does and you have a small property and you have the luxury to do that, I'm targeting the younger age classes. Yeah. I'm not targeting and, the older age classes just for the fact because I'd like, if she's, if that's part of her home range, and we know her her home range is a lot smaller than a buck. She's she doing be there what next I year want. She, exactly. <laughs> you know, you kill, you kill the ones, if, for me, when I'm trying to reduce deer numbers, I'm killing the ones that aren't doing what I want. You know, the, the ones that are that don't have their core area on my 40. Right. You know, well, heck, I got a client in Wisconsin's got an 80. You know, I've got it set up so most of the does, their core area is on that 80. When we need to shoot does, the very first thing I do is I go to those stands that are just a, an ethical 50 yards off that fence line, and those does that are going back and forth over that fence, so that's, those are the ones when I have to shoot does, those are the Those ones, ones I'm going to shoot target. first. And yeah. you're doing a little bit more um, more scientifically than I'm doing. What I do normally is I'm looking at, I'm looking because most of the properties I hunt are smaller. I'm looking at those younger age classes because, let's face it, those are the ones that are consuming more of the food. Well, exactly. You've got a yearling doe or even a fawn. The skeleton system's not even fully developed yet. Pound for pound, in a given day, is it going to eat as much as big mature don't know? But pound for pound, that thing is going to put more pressure it, on that habitat. Oh, and I don't know where that deer's going to be, you well, know, a year or two. Or and let's take it a step further. What's going to be the first that deer to die of winter uh, mortality? It's, a young one. it's going to be a young one or an old hurt one. Mm -hmm. Or or you know, something that's That's interesting. Yeah, that's that's, that's definitely you know, the, interesting. And what's what's the first what's the first 
deer, a, a coyote's going to take down, a timber wolf, mm -hmm. a bear, you know, any, a cat, any predator. Your most vulnerable are the fawns. The young and the weak. They're, they're going to be the ones that are take exactly. The young and weak are going to be the ones that are taken out first by everything. You know, so. No, it's not saying kill all of them. It's oh, just heck saying no. that. That, that if you have, well, like I said, it's, I always preface everything. If you have that luxury, you know, some guys don't care. Okay, I don't even want to care. I don't, I, I don't want to get into and, this. I don't, and that's you know fine. what? Go ahead and fill your tag. Do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, go have Be fun. Be happy. That's, the, that's why we're doing this. We don't want to make this stressful. Yeah. But if you want to think about it, then just, you know, then you maybe just put a little bit of pen to the paper and come up with some kind of plan. Yeah, and, and I will take it one step further. We have sent people such conflicting messages for years and years and years it was those are the sacred cows but they're not they're not sacred cows and then on the flip side now these days kill them all kill them kill them it's like come on for almost said a bad thing because this honestly gets on my nerves you know no you don't kill every doe that walks Killing a bunch of does does not make, in so many situations, does not make for a healthy deer herd. That is the biggest bunch of baloney in the world. And I'll tell you what, in Minnesota, they have went through over harvest for way too many years and then throw in some a couple bad winters and their deer numbers are down. You know what I was telling my clients? Shoot that year and a half old buck. Mm -hmm. Do not shoot that doe. Shoot that nubbin buck. Shoot a mature buck if you can. Do not shoot that. There's doe. certain.